Namaste, Uncle and Auntie. It's a beautiful Monday. It was voting today. I don't know how much of you went out and stained that finger for them or how much I you give them that finger I've been asking you people to give. Tomorrow or a little later tonight, we'll know what went on. But I'm told they had a very low turnout across the country on voting. And I think, Joshua, mm -hmm. I think people are beginning to wake up. Yes. What do you think, Adam? I think they're waking up. People are waking up in this land, Adam. They're not, they're not going to take this thing anymore. Um, this program tonight, Adam, you're going to love it. I invite you to listen, to come here, just to listen to this program. I have a reason for that. <laughs> like I said, Adam, namaste, Adam. Namaste. I hear you, brother. Right, uncle. The whole world is changing. And changing faster than anyone can imagine. We will have a new world order very soon. A new world order very soon. Wait, watch and see. While the rich superpowers are fighting for dominance at the top, the poor countries, or I should say the rich countries that are very poor, are waking up. Asia and the Arabian countries has awoken already. And now I see the African continent is beginning to open up their eyes and their mouths. Only Guyana is asleep or in a coma. But trust me, Uncle and Auntie, trust me on this one. Glenn Lal and his Kaicho team will continue to throw cold water on our beds to get her to wake up. The PPP and the PNC for the last 50 years has blindfolded Ayo. And Ayo have, yes, Ayo have this straight jacket that I am sleeping with. Hmm. So that them could have been doing and still doing what they feel, what they want, when they want and how they want. In this country with our resources. Too much secret and underhand deals has been going on with them and these foreign exploiters. I believe only cold water and your beds will get you to wake up and open your eyes. Tonight, you would hear with your own ears how the Africans are waking up to the wholesale thievery of their resources. Glenn have been speaking 29 years now through the pages of the Kaicho News, but you guys have not been paying, or I should say, you guys have been paying a deaf ears. So let's go. A few months ago, I visited Kenya. Ghana, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. Those places, <laughs> Adam, the people are amazing, the best. And I have also traveled a bit across this world to many of the first world countries and saw firsthand what they have become with the resources from places like Guyana, Africa, and other third world countries. A gentleman named William Ruto, the just elected president of Kenya, said two weeks ago, if Kenyans are not dining at the table, then they will end up, then they will end up in the menu. Yes, to be chewed up and spit out by the foreigners. That man is wrong, Adam. Look what's happening here, uncle. Look what's happening here in Guyana. The PPP and the PNC for more than 50 years have been allowing the foreigners to eat lavishly 
our food, on our dining table, leaving the crumbs for us to pick up and make do with. Tell me, when will this come to an end? When will you and me be sitting at the table to eat our own food from our own country as the owners and not be treated as cooks, waiters and waitresses by these foreigners? What happened, brother? What happened, sister? We don't have mouths. We don't have a family. We don't have a future or we don't know to eat. We don't know to live with this vast wealth we have. Hmm? Every contract issued to these foreigners is eating up our resources. Resources that cannot grow back or plant back. And all jack man in this country is silent. Every day we hear about foreigners flying in from different parts of this world. Sitting at well decorated tables with these misfits. Yes, these misfits we have for leaders. Working out deals to benefit foreign countries. And of course. And of course, the misfits pockets. When will this come to an end? When, when will you people stand up and speak out about all these secret deals being made with your resources, uncle? Your wealth, auntie? Or you all going to settle for grants? Once a year bonus and handouts. You tell me. I want to go to this thing again in your ears. Not a blind scent of taxes from Exxon. No ring fencing. No capping of interest rates on those investments. No full protection from an oil spill. And most importantly, the 50-50 partnership we have with Exxon. <laughs> the misfits them not properly monitoring, checking or verifying the expenses with those inflated bills. Knowing very well, knowing very well, uncle, they're dealing with international gangsters of the highest order. With all that, do you really think you and I have a chance sitting on the dining table and be treated as partners with our resources? A real 50-50 partner? Eh? Tell me, uncle. Tell me something, Adam. You all like the salary are you getting? You like sending your children to school with empty lunch kits? Or you like when you have to beg neighbors for little salt and onions to make little salt and rice to feed a picnic? I'm just asking. Better get your acts together and start standing up and speaking out to sit at your own dining table with your own food. Or you will continue to be the main course for them to chew, eat and spit out all of you. They've been doing it. They've been doing it a long time now. And it's getting worse now. Like the Kenyan president. South Africa has a young rising political star. This man named Julius Malema. Hmm. I have him for the next president of South Africa. That's how much I love him. Whenever I hear this man speak, uncle, the blood in my body 
boils. I want you to listen to him. Listen to him. We are not fighting against whites. We are fighting to sit on the dinner table. White people, you will no longer eat alone. We are coming to sit on the dinner table. And if you are refusing us on a dinner table, we are going to destroy that dinner table. No one is going to eat until all of us in South Africa eat from the same dinner table. That's what we are fighting for. Why are you closing us out? Are you happy for 25 years? You are eating alone. We are watching you through a small window. It's enough. Sangena. Sangena get for sure at the dinner table. We are going straight to the dinner table. No one is going to exclude us here. Hey, if you want to be excluded because you want to appear nice before white people, go on. Right now we are talking the truth here. We are not fighting whites. We have never called for their killing. Hey, the only thing we have called is, let's sit together on a dinner table. You are no longer going to sit alone. It is not sustainable. It is dangerous to continue sitting alone. Why? The table may be destroyed. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's what we are fighting for. Why are you closing us out? Are you happy? For 25 years. You're eating alone. We are watching you through a small window. It's enough. We are going straight to the dinner table. No one is going to exclude us here. Hey, if you want to be excluded because you want to appear nice for the white people, go on. We know we are talking the truth here. We are not fighting white. We have never called for their killings. Hey, the only thing we have called for is let's sit together on a dining table. You are no longer going to sit alone. It is not sustainable. It is dangerous. To continue to sit alone. Why? The table may be destroyed. His words. You hear how leaders should and must speak? Yes. I don't know what's going on with the blood in your body, uncle and auntie. But mine. Mine is boiling here. Knowing what these foreigners doing to us here in Guyana ever since. And there seems to be no stopping of the madness going on. Like I said earlier, no taxes. No ring fencing, no protection, no checking the inflated bills, not capping the interest rates, clean up money, sitting in eggs on pockets that belong to us. And what is more sickening is that these morons, these sellouts, handing out more and more projects with the same terms and conditions. Where we can't even buy the pot cover to cover the rice pot. No. No, uncle. No, auntie. This is putting all of us in the graveyard. If we don't stop Jagdeo 
and the opposition. We will end up in the graveyard. Please wake up. And wake up fast, uncle. Because all our rich minerals, our timber, and our oil can vanish before you go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning. Yes. With today's technology and the speed in which Jagdeo approving these projects and the silence of the opposition all the oil will done overnight and you will be left worse off than the Africans yesterday I saw breaking news on oilprice.com the headline reads, Exxon new fracking technology can double oil output. You didn't hear what I said there. Exxon new fracking technology can double oil output. So what are they bringing up now, uncle? It can double overnight with this new fracking technology. Fracking, Adam, is like cracking the rock next door to the rock you're extracting oil from. So when the oil finish from the first rock, the oil from the second rock will flow over into the first rock. You hear me? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to drill back from till up top down into the other rock. It's called fracking. It's like cracking your neighbor black tank. What join up to your black tank? So as fast as you empty your, your tank water, the neighbor water flowing over to your tank for heat to fetch away. <laughs> No wonder Exxon Chief Financial Officer said a few weeks ago, we are deploying the best technology and exports for unprecedented results, maximizing value from all fronts in Guyana. <laughs> Guyana has become Exxon treasure trove. They find money more than sun in Guyana. <laughs> Josh, play back that upcoming president of South Africa for me, please. Play him back. We are not fighting against whites. We are fighting to sit on the dinner table white people you will no longer eat alone we are coming to sit on the dinner table and if you are refusing us on a dinner table we are going to destroy that dinner table no one is going to eat until all of us in south africa eat from the same dinner table that's what we are fighting for why are you closing us out are you happy for 25 years you are eating alone we are watching you through a small window it's enough sing again again for sure at the dinner table we are going straight to the dinner table no one is going to exclude us here hey if you want to be excluded because you want to appear nice before white people. Go on. Right now we are talking the truth here. We are not fighting whites. We have never called for their killing. Hey, the only thing we have called is, let's sit together on a dinner table. You are no longer going to sit alone. It is not sustainable. It is dangerous to continue sitting alone. Why? The table may be destroyed. 
That's a real leader. You heard his voice. His passion and the fight in him against what the white people doing to South Africa and its people. Have you ever heard any one of these misfits we have for leaders speak like that before? About what is going on with our resources here, uncle? No. Eh -eh. At least Glenn Lal has never heard any one of my leaders speak like that. Every day, Jack Dale talking about what is good for the foreign investors to keep them happy. Norton, on the other hand, don't want to use that word renegotiation at all. And then came Raj Ramjatan saying, if I want more than 2% for my own political party. 30 plus years, uncle, these misfits for leaders allow the foreigners to eat our food alone on our dining table. Leaving the crumbs that fall off the table for us. Yes, man. When? When will you join? Malema and say, enough is enough in this country. I told you earlier, 29 years Kaicho News has been trying to bring awareness of what's going on with our resources. Two and a half years now, I myself have been talking on this program every Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, highlighting the wholesale thievery of our resources. And everybody keep quiet. This country is sinking. Every minute that goes by when the day come. What happened, brother? What's going on? I want all of you to listen again to another part of a speech made the other day by this political firebrand. That same man of South Africa. In listening to it, you will realize how calm he is. Trying to hold back the emotions of hurt and pain which he feels. Upon witnessing what is going on in that country called South Africa. Please play him, man. We have a situation yes, in South Africa where... A white-owned capitalism or economic system has been exploiting our people and our people have not been benefiting from the mineral resources in our country. We have a company called the London Mine which is mining in a place called Marikana. In that mine, the, the, the mine has got everything, all the basic needs water, electricity, roads. And just next to a mine is a township or a village where black, pe black people stay without water and electricity, without roads, without proper schools. Yet London Mine is taking their platinum and reinforcing and making London and Britain to be what it is. We cannot claim to be Africans, yet we have nothing to show as a proof that indeed we are Africans.
for because we do not even have title deeds to prove that we are the owners of the land. We have nothing to show. When you go into mines, it's multinational companies. When you go into banks, it's multinational companies. When you go into monopoly industries, it's multinational companies. We cannot even own and protect our own agricultural sector with our fertile land in Africa. Because Europe and the entire developed countries use Africa and South Africa as a dumping site. Every lower grade food get to be dumped in our countries, undermining our own agriculture. When we say those things, we are called communists, we are called anarchists, we are called radicals, because we must continue to bow before a white supremacist. We're refusing that. Taking the platinum, he left out so much of rich minerals they have throughout South Africa and Africa in general. But uncle, let me repeat that man's words. I want to repeat it. I don't know if you guys hear him clearly and understand his dialect or his language. He said... We have a situation in South Africa where a white-owned capitalism or economic system has been exploiting our people. And our people have not been benefiting from the mineral resources of their country. We have a company called London Mine which is mining in a place called Maricana. In that mine, the mine has got everything. All the basic needs. Water, electricity, roads. And just next to that mine is a township or a village where black people stay without water and electricity without roads, without proper schools, yet London Mine is taking their platinum and reinforcing and making London and Britain to what it is. <laughs> we cannot claim to be Africans, yet we have nothing to show as proof that indeed we are Africans because we do not have transport, which is the title deeds, uncle, to prove that we are the owners of the land. We have nothing to show. When you go to the mines, it's multinational companies. When you go into the banks, it's multinational companies. When you go into monopoly industries, it's multinational companies. We can't even own and protect our agricultural sector with our fertile land in Africa. Because Europe and the entire developed countries use Africa and South Africa as a dumping ground. Every lower grade food gets to be dumped in our countries, undermining our own agriculture. When we say those things, we are called communists. We are called anarchists. We are called radicals because we must continue to bow before the white supremacy. We are refusing that. What is different? What is different in Guyana? Last week, 
just last week, my reporter went into Matthews Ridge. Excuse me. My reporter went into Machu's Ridge, where the residents complaining bitterly. I know. I know. I know. Adam. Yes, sir. The people complaining bitterly of how the Chinese, the multinationals, digging out our rich, rich manganese and gold and treating Guyanese like if they're second-class citizens in their own land with their own wealth, uncle. Those Chinese breaking up the road, the walkways, the bridges that these people have to use daily, getting not even a pot cover out of it. And when they complain, the Chinese telling them that is not their responsibility. It's our responsibility. Yes. Me and you tax dollars must fix that what the Chinese broken up. Are you real in this country? When enough is enough in this land, man. Foreigners fetching out our wealth. Broking up our country. At the same time. Inconveniencing our brothers and sisters. With their daily lives. And me and you, money. Gotta fix it back. I need help here. I need help to understand what is happening in this land. Don't you think that the Chinese dining table, where them alone eating, spitting the bones of the owners of this wealth, should have been broken up a long time now? I am asking. I am just asking. Uncle, when this issue was raised with Barrett Jack Dale by my reporter last week at his press conference, he said the Chinese company has to fulfill the arrangement. That was issued to the Canadian company who the license was granted to. And that's it. And that's it. Who will enforce it? You hear that? We government, these misfits for leaders, issued a manganese license with duty free this and duty free that to a Canadian company. The Canadian company turn around and sell the same license with all the benefits to the Chinese and walk away with millions of US from our land with our wealth inside. What we get? 
a pot cover. We now have a set of Chinese fracking up our rich land, leaving our brothers and sisters without any form of, of compensation or remedial work done. Should these people still be there? Should that company still be allowed to operate there? I'm just asking again. We carried another story a few days later in which the same Chinese company get a GGMC officer. Get a GGMC officer to fly in there to remove a woman, our Guyanese sister, trying to host a living off of a piece of land next door to the Chinese. The Chinese claiming is their land. And even though the woman showed the GGMC officer, she has legal document from the owner of the land to make a hustle. This woman was forced off, told to vacate, remove. The Chinese get manganese license and removing a resident from a piece of land that got gold. You really believe it's manganese alone? They're going, they went in there or they are, they are in there digging out? No, uncle. Everything in their way they're going with. Thank you. Those residents looking through the window how the Chinese eating at their dining table with their food using our own black brown and proper people to remove them from earning a cassava bread daily. Anything different in the bauxite sector? With the Russians? The Chinese? Go and see how our black, brown, and purple brothers are being treated by them. One bauxite company sitting down here in Guyana for over 15 years and never pay a cent. Never pay a cent to Guyana. Come on. Come on. Them said they're losing money. Year go year come. Go to Omai and see how our brothers and sisters are being treated. Go to Zinjin, farm Aurora Gold Mine, a Canadian company, and see what's happening there. Our brothers and sisters peeping through the hole in the plastic tent, watching how these foreigners whining and dining on the table. With our resources. Some other foreign gold companies sitting down. Quiet. All over we interior. Eating up and drinking up. We soup. And you can't even get a cup of clean water to drink in this country. You living in blackouts morning, noon and night. Ashley Singh announced three more large-scale gold companies to come. And if you think Oma is big, wait, watch and see when, this, when this, these three arrive. Uncle and Auntie, the three don't arrive. And we never hear another word back from Ashley Singh. Aubrey Norton, Kemra Dramjatan, President Ali or Barajagdeo. What deals 
sign with these three companies. God Almighty and our Lord know. Those contracts are not on the website yet. Hmm. Joshua, yes. let them hear what I get in from these three. Largest gold company on earth. Play it, yes. They're here. They're here already. You know. I want you to play back my limo for me. Just now we play them man. Play them back. Situation in South Africa where a white owned capitalism or economic system has been exploiting our people and our people have not been benefiting from the mineral resources in our country. We have a company called the London Mine which is mining in a place called Marigana. In that mine, the, the, the mine has got everything, all the basic needs, water, electricity, roads. And just next to a mine is a township or a village where black, black people stay without water and electricity, without roads, without proper schools. Yet London Mine is taking their platinum and reinforcing and making London and Britain to be what it is. We cannot claim to be Africans, yet we have nothing to show as a proof that indeed we are Africans. For because we do not even have title deeds to prove that we are the owners of the land. We have nothing to show. When you go into mines, it's multinational companies. When you go into banks, it's multinational companies. When you go into monopoly industries, it's multinational companies. We cannot even own and protect our own agricultural sector with our fertile land in Africa. Because Europe and the entire developed countries use Africa and South Africa as a dumping site. Every lower grade food gets to be dumped in our countries, undermining our own agriculture. When we say those things, we are called communists, we are called anarchists, we are called radicals because we must continue to bow before a white supremacist. We're refusing that. That is exactly what these misfits for leaders creating in Guyana. When Ashni Singh can say, if you think Oma is big, Hmm. Wait and see who come in. <laughs> Man, we Guyanese will be cooks. Mm -hmm. And they will be peeping through windows to see how these people eating on our, on our dining table, our food, throwing the ravelings at our workers. He, 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 he had told us about multiplying benefits that these three large-scale mining companies will bring to Guyana. Yes. Adam, you want to hear him? I think I asked for the tape. Could you play him? Yes. Play him. You know how significant Omai was. Contemplate for a moment three large-scale developments, each of which is larger than Omai. Consider for a moment that each one of these will probably be employing more than a thousand Guyanese persons. Consider the food and other supplies that they will need, the transport services, the construction services, the equipment supply and maintenance services, and all of the multiplier benefits that three large-scale gold mining operations will generate in Guyana. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, Adam. 
I think I'm going to take a long vacation until the Guyanese people wake up. I am not getting tired, but I'm getting sick how stupid, clumsy, and dumb some people are in this country to allow these misfits I have parading themselves as leaders to do to Ayo. I need a vacation. What else do you guys need to hear? What else do you need to see to do something about what is happening to your present and that of your future? I don't know. I really, really don't know. Julius Malema said a wealth of South Africa is going to build the cities in England and Europe. We wealth going to build the cities in China, Europe, America, Canada, India, Russia, Australia, plus England. You name the countries. They're here in Guyana secretly and silently building cities for them. And we can't even patch the roads. They're destroying. Or fix the mud dams. Our children has to walk on to go to school. In the richest country on earth today. Fight for your all rights people. From the Esequibo. Demarara, Bobis, down to every village in the Cayuni, Mazaruni, and other districts, including Machu's Ridge, Madia, and so on. Fight. If they can't fix it so that you can get your rightful benefits and shares then you have all right to run them out. If they can't give you a decent livelihood with your own wealth, then I know what has to be done with the dining table. You heard it just now from Malema. Glenn don't have to repeat it. Like Julius Malema said, we are not fighting against you, the multinationals. We are not fighting you, ExxonMobil. We are fighting to eat at the dinner table so that we can sit and eat the food that belongs to us. The food that God Almighty blessed every Guyanese with. And not the crumbs you are throwing at us. I don't want any money. I want you people to print some jerseys. Along with some stickers. And send them to me. So that I can share them out to the Guyanese people. So we can show these multinationals. All of them. In every field. In our country. We need to show them. That these contracts. Must be changed. We must be protected. We must get our rightful share. Any volunteers? Call me, let me know. Y'all can give these misfits the PPP and the PNC money to print red and green jerseys. Don't tell me y'all can't print some that says protect Guyana from an oil spill. Or change all the multinational contracts. So that our brothers and sisters 
can change their lifestyles so that they can eat a meal when the day comes and send their children with lunch rather than an empty lunch kit to school. Please, I am begging. I don't like to beg. I never beg. If I had extra money, I would have done it myself like I did so many times in the past. People need to eat. We have more than enough. We are the richest country on earth today, uncle. Per capita, per person, as I speak. Why more than half of our population can't send them children to school with lunch? With lunch. Even little biscuits inside a plastic bag. Why? Tell me, auntie. I went out and vote for these people today. I hope not. I hope not. I went to Ghana and I shared many stories with you already. One in which the Revenue Authority in Ghana seizing the taxis on the road if the taxi drivers taxes are not up to date. Listen to this Ghanaian brother. What he or how he puts it. Play him for me, please. West Africa, which is made up of 16 countries. And all of these countries today are in the embrace of new colonial exploitation and oppression. And it's one of the richest regions in the world. You find everything in West Africa. And in spite of all of these riches, Many of our people cannot afford a meal a day. Many of our people have no access to education. They have no access to housing. They have no access to health care. How come that we are so poor in the midst of so much riches? Because we no longer own our resources and our resources are not exploited for the benefit of our people. You need to play back that thing. Play it back, let them hear him. West Africa, which is made up of 16 countries, and all of these countries today are in the embrace of new colonial exploitation and oppression. And it's one of the richest regions in the world. You find everything in West Africa. And in spite of all of these riches, many of our people cannot afford a meal a day. Many of our people have no access to education. They have no access to housing. They have no access to health care. How come that we are so poor in the midst of so much riches? Because we no longer own our resources, and our resources are not exploited for the benefit of our people. Hmm. Uncle, auntie, I will give you word for word what a gentleman said here just now. Africans, we must do and demand better for ourselves. West Africa is made up of 16 countries. And all of these countries today are in the embrace of new colonial exploitation and oppression. It's one of the richest regions in the world. You find everything in West Africa. And in spite of all these riches, many of our people cannot afford a meal a day. Many of our people have no access to education. They have no access to housing. They have no access to health care. How come... That we are so poor in the midst of so much riches. Because we are no longer, we no longer own our resources. And our resources are not exploited for the benefit of our people. Hmm. Hmm. 
Auntie and uncle. You sure is West Africa that man is only talking about there? The richest region in Africa with 16 countries can't afford a meal a day for the masses of the population there. No proper education, no proper housing, health care, and blackouts all over. How come? What has been happening in this country called Guyana for the last 30 years, Adam? Huh? The man said, Africans, we must do and demand better for ourselves. <laughs> oh. Oh. Adam, you really capture those words what that man said? All. Mm -hmm. The man said, all those countries today are in the embrace of new colonial exploitation and oppression. You know what that means, uncle? Precisely. Exactly what ExxonMobil and all the foreign companies are doing to the Guyanese people in this country. Exploiting everything to benefit them and leaving us to eat the dust and the smoke of the engines that they're using to dig out every piece of our minerals, our timber, and now our oil. That's what the man means in layman terms or language, uncle. The richest in the region, and despite all of that, they can't give the people a proper meal. Look, Guyana is the richest. Not in the region anymore, but the world today. And it's not Glenn Lal saying this. The financial institutions of the world has listed us as that. And Guyanese can't walk the road with a plastic bag. With bread and tennis roll in their hands and be safe with it. Yes. You can't walk with nothing in your hand, not even an umbrella and be safe. How people hungry in this country. Wait. Wait. Is people living in this country? Hmm? Is people living in this country with no brains or slaves? The foreigners importing water with our wealth for them to drink in we country. They have 24 hour generator services. At their disposal. Using our resources. Flying out in private jets. To seek medical help. With our resources. If so needed. Paying for their children. To receive top class. Or top of the line education in Guyana, out of Guyana's, yes, out of Guyana's oil money. Check the American school, our wealth paying for their children to go to school there. Importing food and beverages of their likes to dine at their dinner tables while many of our brothers and sisters are left to watch them. With lele, with lele side them out as they eat and drink. Are you know what lele? Take a walk. Take a walk, uncle, at the high fluted night spots and hotels. You will understand what I'm saying. How can this ever be allowed? To continue without something being done to that dining table. I always remember. Always remember. 
and live with this coat. And I am dedicating it to all the multinationals and all the politicians of this country. Especially Barajak Dale. Our prime purpose in life is to help one another. And if you can't help them, then at least don't hurt them. And with that, I say God bless you guys. Namaste. I'm going to take a few phone calls.